Hello everyone, today we are going to start a very new uh, series from this scratch which is the embedded system programming. So in this series we are going to teach you about the concept that you need uh, to learn uh, related to embedded programming. So according to the Google, uh, the embedded system programming which is uh, uh, about the development of the consumer facing devices. So it means like the microwave oven you have seen the embedded system inside and in your refrigerator you may have seen the thermostat which controls the uh, temperature in your room AC. Uh, there is a thermostat and it all are examples of embedded systems so basically they are embedded into your daily life and you don't see them specifically but you use them throughout your uh, daily routines so uh, that you uh, don't use the conventional operating system so uh, about the operating systems actually some of the embedded system do use the operating systems but they are specifically designed uh, for the real-time operations and that's why they are called the RTOS which is real-time operating system RTOS real-time operating system and one of the very famous operating systems for the real-time devices is free RTOS and I have created few series on the free RTOS in the STM32 development board. Uh, you can check out my channel or the links in the comments below, uh, description below. So according to the Wikipedia, if you navigate down and see uh, the summary card of the Wikipedia, an embedded system is a computer system. Um, it's a combination of a computer processor, computer memory, and input-output peripheral devices. I mean, yes, they can contain all of these, but most of the time, an embedded system would be just a simple 8-pin. It could be an 8-pin microcontroller as well. Or uh, it could be nearly 14 pin, 20 pin, 14 pin, uh, 40 pins, or up to 64 pins and more. The microprocessor and the difference between the microprocessor and microcontroller is that the microprocessor needs a separate set of uh, I.O. devices, um, uh, the ROM, RAM, but on the other side, the microcontroller have everything built in. So microcontroller is an optimum choice for the embedded systems. But yeah, you may find uh, the microprocessors in most of the embedded systems as well. Uh, whenever we talk about the embedded programming, the first concept came into mind is embedded C. There are C++ compilers available for the embedded programming, like you may have seen uh, the uh, GNU AVR, uh, which is uh, used in the Arduino programming, where you mostly use your embedded C++ programming as well. But in this tutorial series, we will be specifically focusing on the embedded C. Embedded C is a set of language extension for the C programming language uh, by the C standard committee to address commonality issues that exist between C extensions for different embedded systems. This is the definition according to the Wikipedia. Uh, but if I tell you about the embedded C, it is basically uh, so close to the assembly language uh, where uh, you get the benefits of a, a high level programming language, but you still close to the machine level. So it's a basic combination of both of these words and you can benefit from both of these words. But on the other side, where the C++ comes, it is about the classes, the object-oriented programming, which may be related to the embedded systems, but is not required. Uh, in this tutorial series, we will be focusing on the C language, but we will touch the assembly language. About the microcontroller choices, I may not be focusing on any specific microcontroller but you may apply all of this embedded system knowledge to every other embedded system microcontroller or the microprocessor. Uh, but we will be touching Arduino, AD51 architecture, STM32, STM8, PIC microcontroller, or maybe sometime the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi Pico. One very famous uh, language is emerging into the 
microcontroller world or embedded system world is the Python. Python is becoming very famous in the microcontroller development or the embedded systems development because of the MicroPython extension of it. The MicroPython could be applied onto the Raspberry Pi Pico, ESP32, ESP8266 and their related uh, boards. So because of the tiny ML, there is a possibilities uh, to use uh, the machine learning onto the embedded systems as well. So embedded systems opens a lot of opportunities for you. And because we are focusing on to the minimum uh, resources and the minimum uh, how to utilize most out of a limitation. So in the embedded systems world, you have a microcontroller which has a very limited RAM, ROM, you have a limited resources, you can't declare as much variable as you want, but you need to be and optimizing your uh, program so that you can get most out of the limitations. So like the 8051 microcontroller, the famous, very popular 20-pin 802051 uh, is a microcontroller where you only have 2K of RAM or ROM and uh, even a few uh, bytes of ROM. So there are a lot of microcontrollers where the RAM and ROM is very limited and you need to be very precise and very uh, choosy when to declare which variable and how to utilize that. There are also in, inbuilt peripherals inside the microcontrollers in the modern uh, architectures like the STM8 and even though the, uh, the previous 8051 architectures don't have built-in ADC or ISCRC, but the more modern uh, variations of the 8051 also have these two peripherals inbuilt. Uh, so we'll be discussing these protocols and the peripherals and the timers and everything, but we'll be generally talking about the embedded systems rather than talking to a specific microcontroller. I have created multiple micro microcontroller related uh, series into my YouTube channel. You can find out if you search on my channel. Uh, but if you uh, need some specific topic, please leave a comment below. I will try to make uh, the series on that. So that's how uh, we are covering the series. So if you want uh, to stay tuned, please subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you.